Hey everyone, it's Carrie, and welcome to a another video. If you can't already tell, we're in a different <laughs> spot than normal. I've got some of my yarn over here that's a little messy. And then I've got some other yarn behind me, and I also have a custom here that was not picked up. And then my Christmas holiday stuff is in this shelf down there, so it is not in my market shelf. But I thought for today's video, it would be super fun for me to come on here and just kind of go over and show you guys some of the things that I have made for my new markets coming into 2024. It's crazy to think this is going to be my first year actually doing markets like full year because I started crocheting in June. It's just crazy to think I'm even at this point. My first market's March 9th. I've been working really hard and I'm still working really hard. I have a lot more stuff that I would like to get done and just trying new patterns. And the first First market is always just like seeing maybe how the rest of the market year is gonna go and whatnot even if I don't sell a lot at this first market because I'm a little bit skeptical because it's not by like a big company or anything I know that in April towards the end of April I have my big market that I got accepted into and then possibly a two-day market in May I'm just waiting to hear back so I'm not too worried I'm just gonna keep crocheting away as much as I can I have a list of some of the items that I have made Made. I'm gonna show you guys some of them not everything because it would take me forever to get through everything because I have about 213 in the tubs that I have stacked up behind me. I'm not gonna include the items that I crocheted in my previous crochet in a week video that I just posted as well as what I have crocheted this week because I have not inventoried any of these items and so they're in separate bins so I can inventory them then I can put them up and I know I have them on my list and I also know that I missed a few we're just gonna give it a shot so we're gonna start with the ones that are closest to me so the first bin that I have is mainly all of my turtles and I think everyone's pretty much seen most of my turtles all in all in total so far that I crocheted that's in this bin because I have made more turtles since inventorying I have a about 10 normal turtles. Here are some of the colors. I talked about my turtles before. Typically what I end up doing is I just get like two colors and I make two with like the shell one color and the fin one another one and then I flip the colors and do that and that's usually how I end up building my inventory or doing like different color combos kind of like this. So I have 10 normal turtles in here right now as well as I also have five sunflower turtles. I really thought sunflower turtles would be a bigger hit than they were which surprised me because everyone seems to love turtles and everyone loves sunflowers whenever I make them but the sunflower turtle combination for me did not do super anything so i actually am not making any more sunflower turtles going into this year unless i all of a sudden start selling a lot because of it being spring but i do have leftover ones from last year like two of the pink ones and then i think i had two purple leftover and then one turquoise I was really surprised when they didn't sell at my last market. Even the smaller farmer's markets I did, they just kind of got overlooked, which was really shocking to me. I guess I expected more. <laughs> so in this bin too, I'm gonna show you guys. I also made a few of these larger stingrays. I do have a pattern for smaller ones that I found, so I'm considering doing those as well, just to have as like easy things for people to get because these don't have the white underside and I think the white underside would be really cute. But I've made like a few in this color and I think in total I have four. I have a light blue, this green, then I've got a turquoise one, then I have a blue one. So this is also a new item. So I also just might take these four and see how they do. I'm making so many new items for this market year that I just honestly have no idea how half of them are gonna do. I have my jellyfish jellyfish I think I have three of because they're not on my list <laughs> so I must have accidentally just like skipped them but I have this one which was actually one that I did as kid safe and I just like don't love hand embroidering eyes so whenever I do it I'm like <sighs> It never turns out the way I want. But I have a blue one as well. And then I believe I have this green one here. And this is a pattern that's actually for free. If you go back and watch one of my videos, which was about like free patterns and stuff. This is one of them. And I believe the stingrays were part of that video too. Those are both free patterns. And the turtle is free as well. As always, 
you can find all the patterns I use in the Google Doc and the description that I always provide. And then pretty much the rest of this box is nothing really exciting. It's a lot of octopus. So I have, I think, about 15 octopus in total. So I've got octopus in some colors like this. I used to do a lot of these short tentacle octopus because they were quicker, but I have definitely found that the longer tentacle octopus sell better. So basically I have some octopus left over from last year, but a lot of them are short tentacles. And then moving forward, I just make the long ones because I end up, I think, charging a little bit more for them. I think people typically know what they are better. And usually for my octopus, I use a multicolored yarn. It actually ends up typically being a burnet baby or something or just like big twists some extra yarn that i have that maybe isn't the sweet snuggles that i would typically use for my other plushies i typically go for the colorful yarn because i think most kids like it a little bit more than like a plain blue or something also in this box i have my one lone clownfish that i did and this is also a free pattern as well and i think i'm gonna try and make one more so i have a pair because i've said this before whenever i do markets i prefer to have pairs of things opposed to singles that's gonna be everything for this box if you notice i keep changing like my spots on the camera it's because i'm having to move around <laughs> So I apologize. But we're moving on to the next box. So this next box is what I call the cow box. <laughs> Cause basically the only thing in it is cows. I have a variety of cows. I actually need to make more cows. I have just been a little bit busy focusing on other things since I knew I had some left over. But I'll show you guys what I have. So I have two of my Huey cows, which is actually my own pattern. So if you guys are interested in it, it will be in the description. But I have two of these Highland cows. And then I do have one that is currently above me that you guys can't see that is in a different color. It's a little bit more of a mustard. And I'm also going to finish up. I have a feeling that I'm just going to keep making my normal cows more in this size and this style so I probably will also just make some normal cows and then maybe also add that as an option for a pattern bundle somebody asked me the other day if I would do a pattern bundle so I am considering just making like a normal cow a mini cow and a Huey cow all pattern bundle and having that option for people but I have two Hueys right now I have one of my mini cow lavender ones I have my brown and white mini cow as well like I said these mini cows are from my pattern I have my black and white standard one I am gonna bring this one with me and see I'll probably discount it or it'll just be my mascot but this was the first one I made a little lemon sprite cow <laughs> but he's not as good as the other ones he might just come with me or he might actually just go on my shelf and reside but right now he's been chilling in the cow box. I have my heart cow, which granted this market is gonna be past Valentine's Day, but I will still bring it with me because hey, people always are looking for something cute. I have another flower crown cow. I have my sky slash cloud cow, just depending on what you wanna call it with a little sun hat. This is a leftover baby safe cow from last year. And then I have one more big cow, which is this cherry blossom cow. And like I said, this is a separate pattern, pattern that I was using a lot for my cows last year. I'm undecided if I'm gonna use this pattern or if I'm just gonna switch over to using my Huey pattern and just modifying it. But that's all the cows I have. In total, I have seven small cows made and then I have four of my large cows. All right, now we're moving on to the dinosaur box. So in total, I have made about, ooh, 13 dinosaurs, I believe. And then I have one small dinosaur left over and then I have one snake. I'm not making snakes anymore for my future markets, nor am I making the dinosaurs in the acrylic yarn like I did when I originally started out. But this is last year's extra little items carrying on. Typically when I have these extra items like this, I will put them on the table to fill space or I will put them on later as things sell, just so the table doesn't look so empty. This is one of the small little dinos in the acrylic yarn. It's the same yarn that I used to do the snake. But onto the dinosaurs, I have this dinosaur that is from last year. And this is actually made from Premier Parfait Chunky. So it is smaller than my other dinosaurs. I have him left over. I have a coral dinosaur. I have a plain lavender dinosaur. Plain mustard dinosaur. I have a plain pink dinosaur. I have a hot pink and pink dinosaur. Same thing with the colors flipped. I have a 
yellow and blue. Blue and yellow with the colors flipped, and this is actually a dinosaur leftover from my last market. Turquoise and yellow, yellow and turquoise. This is turquoise with a dark blue. And then this is the ice green with the yellow. So those are basically all of the dinosaurs I have. Same thing that I do with the turtles, I oftentimes will just flip the colors. With these two, I basically just mix match the colors, flipped it. I had the skeins of yarn already out, and so I figured, why not do it? I think the most important thing when you do markets is just realizing that everybody has a specific different taste. So the more color options you can have of certain items, the more you can cater to everyone. So somebody might really like this hot pink or someone might really like this light pink with a hot pink accent. You never know, but the best thing you can do is definitely have options, whether it's different plushies or colors. It will all make a really big difference in the amount of sales you can get and the people you can reach. So that is all I have for the Dino box. And now we're moving on to the farm animal box. So this is one of the boxes that I am not going to be going through and showing showing y'all everything because essentially it's just one big box filled to the brim with a lot of similar items <laughs> that don't have any changes. So I came into this market wanting to focus on small items of course, but I will say I have been making a lot of bigger items recently, but small items were definitely a focus and knowing the items that sold out or sold so well for me at my previous market, I wanted to focus on them. So that's what I have here. I wanted to hit a certain amount of numbers for my ducks, mallards, chicks, and then the roosters as well as possums. So working on building up possums but the other guys have already accomplished and then the mushrooms I've already accomplished. I tend to prefer when I am definitely market prepping or whatever to bulk make an item. That's something I struggled with last year. Since I have so much time before my first market in March, I have really been focusing on bulk making, just also keeping in mind that I'm gonna have more markets later on and smaller items will always sell better than larger items. So the first thing I have is these possums. They're the mini ones and I've made 11 so far in this box. I have these pop-up mushrooms mushrooms and I made five I believe of the pop-up mushrooms and then I'm also carrying over from last year the little mushy men that you always see people do I never have a very good time selling these but these are left over from last year I had the green and red ones so they will be coming with me and I'm gonna try the mushy pops and see maybe if I can have a mushroom themed item I've just haven't had much luck selling really mushrooms in my area. I have 11 chickens, these little guys. I have 10 mallards. I have 10 roosters. I have 10 of these pigs. And then carrying over from last year, I think I have four bees left over from last year. I did my bees in acrylic yarn. I am really undecided on bees. Honestly, I might just not make any bees this year or I might just make like a handful, but I'm definitely gonna be switching over to using like sweet snuggles or some type of this type of yarn opposed to acrylic. But like I said, I'm still even undecided if I'm gonna do bees. I feel like if you go to any crochet market, everyone there has bees. <laughs> it's always that catch-22 of like, do I want to do them? Do I not want to do them? I'll probably convince myself to at least make a few, but as of right now, I have four left over from last year. Moving on to this box. This is my box that is filled with like a lot of like, I guess maybe like, I don't want to say sea creatures because they're not really sea creatures, but maybe like aquatic <laughs> amphibians. I don't know. <laughs> I have made, and I'm just gonna show the colors and stuff. I have made 15 leggy frogs that are normal. Seven baby safe leggy froggies where the eyes are crocheted on like something like this or like this, opposed to the other ones that have eyes like this. Oh, I like this. All in all, I have a little bit over 20 leggy frogs. I would think I was trying to hit 25 and I'm pretty certain I did, or I'm close to. <laughs> Don't quote me on that. I have all those guys already done. I made it just in a variety of colors between, you know, Sweet Snuggles Light, some brunette blanket, just a whole different variety. And then moving on, mermaids. I had a few left over. So I had this one left over from last year and this one left over from last year's market. So I went ahead and made some new ones. So this is a new color they didn't make last year. I carried over the pink and then the purple and I made two of each of these colors. So I have eight mermaids in total. The mermaids sold decently, like not like crazy. So I just wanted to choose like two per each and have that so that way I can make myself happy with my numbers. <laughs> I have select whales left. I need to make some more. I have a light blue whale and then 
pink whale and then I think I also have a purple whale but I only have eight whales right now. Whales are another thing that I feel like are bees where they're super common. So I always go undecided with making them or not. They didn't sell like super well but they are quick market makes so I probably end up just going to do what I wanted to originally do the first time, which was four per each color. So I'll probably end up doing that again. This box also includes my axolotls. I still need to redo some of the colors, but in total I have 17 axolotls. So I have the pink with the hot pink. I have like a blue with this ice green. I have the purple axolotls. This is the green with a turquoise. And then I also have a light green with the ice cream. So all in all, that's what I have in this box. And then the last box that we're going to be going over will be my bigger plushie box. As I said, that does not include a lot of the things I've made recently, which a lot of them have been bigger plushies, but it will include some of them. All right, so starting in this box, we'll start with the raccoon that you can evidently see. I have one raccoon. I have two of my foxes, two giraffes in just different colors. <laughs> Always about variety. <laughs> I have this unicorn that is left over from my last year and this was one of the original things that I had made. So this guy has been with me for a little bit and it's always interesting to look back and see at all of the things that I kind of have improved upon, I guess you could say. But I probably will end up donating this little guy so that he can have a home and still be loved on and everything. <laughs> Minus the fact that he does have some mistakes. <laughs> I have this heart pig, which this one too has been with me for a really long time. It was one of the original ones that I made. This little guy will probably get donated as well so he can find a home because nobody just ever seems to want him. I have this unicorn kind of dangly thing and I was honestly really shocked that I did not sell it last year. I had a lot of people interested in it but nobody got it and it is baby safe but I definitely learned last year that I don't like to make too many baby oriented items because unless you have that like baby crowd you're not going to sell anything. I have this little mini koala. I have a purple bunny. This is a leftover witch cat from last year, which I guess it will catch a ride with me. If not, it will go live on the Halloween shelf, but right now it is in my box to come with me because people seem to really think it was cute last year and I sold quite a few of them, so it'll probably hitch a ride with me. I have one of my gray elephants and then I also have a light blue elephant. I have a hippo right here and then I have one of my triceratops from last year. So that is basically it for everything I have. Like I said, I didn't show everything like the bare bones part of it, but all in all, I think for my like large items, I had a about 13 at the time of recording this video. But as I said, I have made a lot of large items recently that will be inventoried and added probably this weekend after I kind of complete my work week or the following weekend when we hit March so I can kind of see a little bit better. But that's pretty much what I have right now. I think I have about 213 items, maybe a few more because I think I missed some of them when I like broke it down and got to like the nitty gritty. But for the most part, that's what I have. So I'm feeling quite good considering the fact that it is the 19th of February when I am recording this and the market's March 9th. My original market in November of last year, I think I went in with a little bit over 200 and that was a much larger market where I sold out of pretty much almost everything. Coming into this market, I'm feeling good. It's a shorter market. It doesn't have, I think, as crazy marketing or people going opposed to the market I did last year was about like 8,000 people. The market's gonna be nowhere close to that. So I'm feeling all in all good. I'm pushing myself really hard and just focusing on also creating things that I really enjoy, which is what you're gonna see when the larger items get added or more inventory is added later on. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope I maybe gave you some inspiration on what you should make for your next market. And let me know if you guys end up deciding to make anything that I have made before because I always love to see what everyone makes. Let's all survive this market year. <laughs> we can do it. So I hope you guys have an amazing rest of the week and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.